my preferred cartridge for shooting almost exclusively most of my trophies Red Stags and Chamois and Tar has been with the 2506 uh, there's only been a couple where I've shot them with either the 7mm Magnum sorry 7mm Morza 7mm Magnum uh, quite a few pigs I've shot with the triple two, but I'll talk about that later but yeah the 2506 has been my go to most reliable uh, all round cartridge for New Zealand and I know there'll be others that um, have different views and that's totally fine um, for me as an experienced hunter I felt the 2506 was just perfect it was like the accuracy of a 243 uh, with a little bit more legs to it and as much killing power um, with similar amount of recoil which I'm, I'm not a fan of recoil I bought this second hand uh, years ago probably back in 2005 so it's more than 12 years old now and this has been a very reliable rifle for me the 2506 the um, same cartridge size as what I'm using currently in Australia, the 3006, just neck down to essentially a 243 projectile, a little bit wider than 25 cal. And I'm running a, um, a Weaver 4.5 to 14 power scope. It's a Weaver Grand Slam. I've been through two of these scopes. Uh, the first one was dropped in a creek about two or three years ago and they replaced it under warranty actually which was very kind of them and then I've got a um, bipod I'm not exactly sure of the brand what is it a bush buck bush buck bipod which is just handy for those longer shots and the 2506 has been my go-to caliber in New Zealand um, I love it for its mild recoil its pinpoint accuracy it's got a nice flat trajectory out to about 350 metres, which has usually been my maximum range. And as you can see, I've taken it and given it a fair hammering. There's scratches all over it. That's either from the scrub or else from having antlers strapped alongside my bag and this being um, over my shoulder rubbing up against it. You know, I've, I've really used my rifles as, as a tool they haven't. I've, I've looked after them in terms of keeping them clean afterwards but while I'm on the hill they are a tool and I'm not precious about it. So similar to the 7mm Magnum that you would have seen, a um, little bit of a palm swell on these stocks but there's no raised cheek piece unfortunately. The cheek piece will be on this side actually. Um, it's a little bit different in that this action here on the 695s uh, has the top recessed um, taken out of it whereas on the 690 this plate goes along the top and it's a little bit of a pain when ejecting uh, cases at times uh, and if you want a single load um, your cases into your uh, your breech they can be a little bit gimmicky the 690 so the 695 made that improvement so yeah that's it there the rifling in this 2506 it's seen better days it's you know been around the traps a fair bit so yeah the 2506 I, I used to have confidence in the 2506 uh, without any hesitation on shooting big red stags out to 300 350 meters shucker he's just weighing all over the tripod there um, yeah 350 meters I would happily put the crosshair at the base of the neck and touch off a shot and drop stags I shot them in the chest usually where I'd go with the 2506 and I was using 100 grain uh, flat base Hornady projectile and I would always aim if I was going to hit the shoulder I would go right through um, sort of just below midway on the shoulder blade and just totally smash that front shoulder go through its vitals and then usually it would always pass through the other shoulder break that shoulder and then get held up in the skin I never had pass through shots with my 2506 unlike the 270 and I don't mean to 
bag that calibre out. I'm sure people find recipes that work really well. Um, but I couldn't believe how many mates of mine had two 70s that the bullets just zipped right through. And I'm sure that was projectile selection. Um, but I, you know, what I like about the 2506 is the is the way that the bullet always does its job in the animal and it's 100% retention in the animal. I don't get, uh, unless you're going for a lung shot through the ribs um, and it zips out both, both sides unobstructed by bone, uh, then basically no bullet's going to come at least stopping the animal when you shoot them there. So yeah, the 2506, what, what are some of my main memories with the 2506? Um, there's so many it's hard to actually say which one's my favourite, but one with Andre at the party was um, going up a, a stream we used to pop up to quite regularly and spied one deer, Andre, uh, it was his turn so he used this 2506 line it up about 230 meters or something up a scree and uh, I was filming um, I have to try and find that, that that footage but I was filming and he touched off the shot and I just saw a puff of you know hair come off the neck and and the deer went straight down and then I, I saw something sort of like fly off in the background uh, which I wasn't sure if it was an animal or or a bird but anyway we got up to um, we got up to where the deer were and found that there was a second deer there that Andre had shot through the chest so it had gone through the first animal's neck right where it was aiming and carried on up and hit this other one in the chest so there were two dead deer with one bullet so that was another highlight for this just two hind 